We're going to take a look at uh, negotiable instruments. Uh, a negotiable instrument is a signed writing containing an unconditional promise to pay an exact sum of money on demand or at a future time to a specific person. Uh, it's also referred to as commercial paper. A couple kind of um, negotiable instruments you might be familiar with, the drafts and checks. A draft is an unconditional order to pay involving three parties, the drawer, who is typically the customer, the drawee, which is the bank, and the payee, the one who's to be paid. There are time drafts and site drafts. A time draft is paid at some future time. A site draft is payable on demand. Uh, on a trade acceptance, the seller is both the drawer and payee. And uh, checks are an example of drafts on a bank. And there's cashiers, tellers, and travelers' checks. A promissory note is a promise to pay. There are two instruments on a promissory note. The promissor is the maker, and the promisee is the bearer. Uh, CDs are also a type of negotiable instrument. Uh, issued when a party, the payee, deposits funds with a bank who is the maker, uh, that the bank promises to repay with interest on a certain date. So basically, you are giving your money to the bank as a loan, and they promise to pay it back in the future with interest on a certain date. There are specific requirements for negotiability, uh, a writing signed by the maker or the drawer, an unconditional promise or order to pay, a fixed amount of money, uh, it needs to be payable, payable on demand or a definite time, and to the order or to bearer. We'll look at each one of those in detail. In terms of written form, it just needs to be on something that uh, lends itself to permanence and portability. So um, the next requirement is a signature. It needs to be signed by a maker if it's a note or CD and signed by the drawer if it's a check or draft. Uh, any symbol, uh, even electronic, is good for a signature. Unconditional promise or order to pay. A payment cannot be conditioned on the occurrence or not occurrence of any event. Only unconditional promises are uh, negotiable. We're talking about an express promise to pay. It needs to be a fixed amount of money uh, ascertainable on the face of the instrument. It may indicate legal rate of interest so that it could be uh, determined uh, tied to some statute or prime rate. Payable on demand or definite time. Uh, could include words like payable at site or payable on presentment. Uh, if no time is presented, it's presumed payable on demand. To be negotiable, uh, an instrument must be payable on demand or a definite time, uh, and there are um, acceleration clauses or extension clauses that don't affect uh, negotiability. If it's payable to order, uh, an order instrument is payable to identify person or order. Uh, the identified person may transfer a check to whomever she wishes. Bearer instrument is literally payable to the possessor or the bearer of the instrument. These things don't affect negotiability. It's just the fact that it's undated or pre or post dated. Uh, sometimes there's uh, you know conflict or uh, issues. Uh, in the case of handwritten terms, they outweigh typed or printed terms. Words outweigh figures, uh, things like with interest or um, these things. As long as the uh, document has all the elements of negotiability, it's still negotiable. Instruments can be transferred uh, two ways, transferred by assignment or transfer by negotiation. Uh, and transfer by negotiation is a transfer in which the transferee becomes a holder. And book talks about ways of negotiating order or bearer instruments. Endorsements, you've probably heard of those. Those are typically like on the back of a negotiable instrument. For example, a check, uh, a signature with or without words or statements. 
Endorser is the person who transfers the instrument by signing it and delivering it to another person. And there are several different types of endorsements. We'll go into more detail. Blank, special, qualified, and restrictive. Qualified endorsements are used by agents on behalf of a principal. An example might be an insurance agent. Something uh, that you might see is something like with without recourse. Uh, and this is to uh, relieve the agent of liability. And a qualified endorsement could uh, have a special or blank endorsement on it. The different type of restrictive uh, endorsements are described in your chapter conditional for deposit, uh, trust or agency type endorsements. Uh, in cases there could be issues with endorsements, um, the uh, endorsement should be identical to the name on the instrument. Um, if you ever had that experience where uh, there's a name on the instrument and then the endorsement isn't quite right, the bank may return the check. Um, an alternative or joint pays. In that case, only one of the pays needs to endorse. A holder in due course is a special type of holder under the law. Uh, a holder or assignee is generally subject to the same defenses that the assignor is, but a holder in due course takes the instrument free of most of the defenses and claims that could be asserted against the transfer. They're kind of a super holder. Uh, to be an HDC, you have to take for value and without notice of any defect. Uh, value could be performance, payment for a pre-existing date, uh, an irre irrevocable commitment. A uh, holder would take with notice if he or she has reason to know the instrument's overdue, has been dishonored, or has actual knowledge of something that's suspicious on it. Um, become a holder through an HDC. The book talks about the shelter principle. A holder who does not qualify as an HDC can acquire the rights and privileges as an HDC, and it depends on whether the holder can trace her title back to the HDC. And it, and it lists uh, some limitations on this in your chapter. And then, then the chapter looked at signature and warranty liability. Every party who signs a negotiable instrument is either primarily or secondarily liable. Uh, makers and acceptors have primary liability. Drawers and endorsers have secondary liability. Um, there's special rules concerning unauthorized signatures. If an agent is authorized, they can bind the principal. Uh, if they're not authorized, a common example would be forgery. Then that signature is void. There are also special rules for unauthorized endorsements. Uh, typically, the burden of loss falls on the first party to take the instrument with the forged or unauthorized instrument. And the uh, book goes into detail about um, uh, imposters, you know, somebody um, claiming to be somebody they're not, versus a fictitious payee, that, that, that you are the person, but the, the payee is not real. There are tr transfer and presentment warranties. Under transfer warranties, a transferor has the right to endorse the instrument or enforce the instrument. Uh, they, they warrant that all signatures are authentic and authorized. The instrument hasn't been altered. It's not subject to claim or defense and that the transferor has no knowledge of insolvency. Uh, during presentment, uh, these are these are uh, warranties designed to protect the person that the instrument is presented to. Uh, they warrant that the person obtaining payment has the right to enforce the instrument. The instrument has been altered, and the person accepting has no knowledge that the instrument is unauthorized. Look at defenses, limitations, and discharge to negotiable instruments. Here are some universal. Defenses, and that universal or real defenses means that they are applicable to all holders, including HTCs, and they're listed here. And then there's some personal defenses. These would be um, in defenses against holders.